a Taoist must never display and never become an exhibitionist, otherwise you will be always in trouble. And do not rely on distinctions, comparisons and talent when you deal with men. Why? It is so simple because every man is an egoist. If you depend on your talent, you will be in trouble because you will create enemies. If you depend on distinctions, again you will be in trouble because all around you there will be enemies. Nobody wants you to be superior to them. I have heard one day Mullah Nasruddin came to a Sufi sheikh, very excited. He said to the Sufi sheikh, you have to help me. This sheikh inquired, what is the matter? Mullah said, I feel terrible. It is awful. Recently I have been developing an inferiority complex. Help me. Do something. So the Sheikh said, Tell me something more about it. Why are you developing an inferiority complex? Mullah said, Recently I have been feeling that everybody is as good as I am. Everybody is as good as I am. Whenever you show your talent, you are showing that the other is not as good and other will be offended. Remember, the prince is offended just by a monkey swaying in the trees. If you show your distinction, if you say that you are something, and if you try to prove your talent in subtle ways, everybody will be offended. And they cannot forgive you. They will take their revenge. With every man of distinction, the masses take revenge. Remember, with every man of distinction, the masses take revenge. This is how Jesus was crucified, because the masses could not tolerate his superiority, and he was indeed superior. He had something of the beyond in him. They could not tolerate that this man of simple parentage could be so extraordinary. He was extraordinary, so they had to kill him. Athens could not tolerate the unique minds they were born. So penetrating that there was no comparison, Athens could not tolerate him. Everybody felt offended and Socrates was poisoned. John Su says, do not rely on talent when you deal with men. Remain hidden. It has to be remembered that a Taoist master has never been crucified or poisoned. Remember this. Sufi master Ali Laj Mansur was hanged. His limbs were cut off. But a Taoist master has never been crucified or poisoned. Never because they never rely on talent. They never say that they are distinct and different from you. They never say that they are higher, more divine and holier than you. No, never. They never say any such thing. They behave in such a way that everybody around them will feel that they are superior to them. Sufis 
also keep themselves hidden in the garb of the society so that the people do not recognize him. It is only a rare person who has the eyes can recognize that this particular person has something extraordinary, something different than the world. He has the fragrance of the beyond. Chuang Tzu himself lived such an ordinary life and such yet such a beautiful one that nobody even suspected that there was a man of very extraordinary dimensions. He would pass through village and the village would not even become aware that Chong Su had passed. This is how a master is. Sufi Ragbar Dayal used to say, the moment a Sufi is revealed, he is indeed worthless. During his lifetime, not many people except the selected ones could know them. It is only after the master is no more that people come to know about him. All talent is recognized posthumously. Once it happened that the emperor heard about Chong Su from some source and the rumor was that he was a very wise man. So he sent his Prime Minister in search of him. But where to find him was the problem. Chuang Tzu had no home, no address. He was a constant wanderer. Chuang Tzu used to say, if you stay in one place, it is difficult to hide. People will start suspecting because you have something around you, they will suspect. But by and by they will become aware. So before they become aware, leave them, otherwise you will be in trouble. So he was a constant wanderer. No address, no home, nowhere to go, and there was no way to find him and where to find him. But they tried. When the emperor ordered it has to be tried, they asked many Taoist teachers where to find Chong Su. They said very difficult, nobody knows. He moves like the wind, unknown like a cloud, and his whereabouts are unknown. But you go and if some villager says that there was a man who is absolutely ordinary, and catch that man, maybe Chuang Tzu. And they found him in that way. In the village, some people reported, yes, there was a man who had just come to this village. Absolutely ordinary. You cannot find a more ordinary man than he is. When inquired where he was, they said he was fishing on the bank of the river. He was fishing, very ordinary thing. They went there and said to Chong Su, the emperor has inquired about you and we have been searching for you. Would you like to come to the court? Would you like to become a member of the court, advisor to the king? Chong Su said, wait and let me think. And next day when they came to ask him, he was not found in that village. He had escaped. People had suspected that they had come to know. A man of Tao moves absolutely without identity. A man of substance, not only Taoist master, a Sufi master as well. And indeed one who has really attained to some substance, innerness, 
there is no need for him to exhibit or to show around. Only a novice who knows nothing tries to make exhibitions, tries to make announcements. A man of substance, a man of Tao moves absolutely without identity. Why? It is because if you show talent, then people cannot forgive you. You can forgive fools, certainly they cannot forgive wise men. That is why Jesus was crucified, Socrates was poisoned, and Al-Hilaj Mansur was hanged. You feel so utterly inferior before a Jesus or the Socrates, how can you forgive him then? It is natural. You will make a concerted effort to attack him. You, you will all make a concerted attack to kill that man. Then you will feel that a burden has been thrown. But Jesus is so supreme. If he just stands by your side, you will feel him. The way he walked, the way he looked at you, everything had a different aura around you. And that was capable of making you feel inferior. He has to hide himself. This teaching is very basic, yet very essential that a man of substance has to keep himself hidden so that the, the people around may not be able to know anything about this man of substance. But remember whenever there is a flower blossomed, there is a beauty and the fragrance cannot be contained. But then there is a difference between a flower and a man of substance. Flower is also has substance, but it cannot move. But a man of Taoist, a man of substance, a man of innerness, a man of awakening has the capability to hide himself in myriad ways. I remember one of my friend's colleagues in the institute. He was a man of substance in his own way. Very straightforward, very dedicated to his work. No time to fool around or anything. It was the time of International Econometric Conference. People from all over the world had gathered in the city. Somehow I and he got a little acquaintance and that acquaintance turned into a friendship. Next day he was to present a paper. So whenever a paper is to be presented, he had to do a certain preparation. It is like an examination. You, uh, there are people who are learned in their own field and the paper is to be presented in front of them which is to be cross-examined, counter-questioned and he has to be prepared to answer all those kind of questions. Whenever an occasion is like this, there are people he drinking, they marry, he marry, so some of them said that they are let's go for the right to the city. We will go here and there. But he said that there he has work to do. And he has a paper to press the next day. But they did not agree and they insisted that he should accompany them to 
visit the city as these people have visited the city for the first time. He told me that he doesn't want to go, so I asked him what did he do. He said just wait and watch. It was decided that around six o'clock everybody will come and then they will take him for the city city ride because he was from the same city but although he was from the same city his only world was from his home to his department and he rode bicycle to move from his home to he was a professor he rode bicycle from his home to his department room and that's it Seldom he went out of the campus because everything was available in the campus. The shops were there, so there was no need. And he always wore his slippers and the ordinary shirts and trousers. Around the time when it was the time for those people to come, he prepared a setup in his living room, some empty cups, a ice bucket, and some empty bottles of wine, one or two bottles. And he sprinkled a little bit of wine on his clothes so that anybody comes in, they will get this. At the appointed time, there was a knock, the people came in, but he acted as over drunk, over drunk. And when the people inquired anything, he was answering very deceptively as if he was totally drunk and he even told them to come and let us sit down and have a drink here. But those people were bent upon seeing the city and visiting. So they said this man looks like he is useless, leave him and let's go on our own. They went away. As they went away, he was normal and he started doing this work. Then I remembered that some words came out of me. It is in the profits of my public vices that I nourish my private virtues. This particular quote or sentence was never written. It just spontaneously overflowed it is in the profits of my public vices. He creates a public vice. The man of substance creates public vices so that the people may not be able to recognize him. There was a story about, an anecdote about Jinnad. He lived in a kingdom. It, uh, he was respected. So one day the king's men, the spies, narrated, went to the king and said that they have seen Junad by the side of the river with wine and a woman. And every day he comes there with that woman. The woman is in a veil and he drinks there. So the king got very angry. And he took his men and soldiers and said, let's go and see who is there. And what is, what Junad is doing in my kingdom. We respect him as master, but this is what he is doing. When they reached there, they saw Junad sitting down with the wine goblet and some cups and a woman was sitting next to him. So the king ordered 
the woman to unveil herself in cover so that her identity could be disclosed. When the woman removed the veil, they realized that it was Jinnat's mother. But she was in a veil to create a kind of situation where people cannot recognize him. And the water goblet was checked. It was water instead of wine. It is in the profits of my public vices that I nourish my private virtue. What does it matter to the people if I am prostituting or I am drinking? That has nothing to do with the talent. But the society goes in a particular way that a man who is respected, a certain code of conduct is decided for him that he will behave in this manner. A pseudo life. But a man of substance does not care because he has no ego. He has gone beyond all these things. He can nourish his private virtues in the profits of his public vices. Because all those so-called hypocrites, they will go to a priest who has a big show off. And the, behind that show, behind that curtain, he may be involved in something different and ugly. But we only see what is on the surface, not behind. So it is very easy to hide oneself. It is in the profits of my public vices that I nourish my private virtues. Always remember this. You can make it a quote if it appeals to you and you can paste it in your office in the place. It is in the profits of my public vices that I nourish my private virtues because it is easy. It is easy to nourish your private virtues in the garb of public vices. We keep this morning's session up to here.